Welcome everyone to the Learning Loop Podcast, your best source for educational insights and trends. I'm Chris, your host. Today's special guest is Jordan. She's an educator in New Zealand and a longtime edtech advocate. During our interview today, we'll discuss her inspiration to becoming an educator and how Seesaw has impacted her career. Jordan, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. We're so excited to hear all your amazing answers. You are just a bright, shiny light in the Seesaw history. And so we're excited to kind of hear your background, where you started, and kind of where you are today in regards to Seesaw itself. Um, I'll start with like a softball question, an easy one here. When did you first realize that you wanted to be an educator? And what do you think kind of made that thought come into your head? I actually originally wanted to be a car mechanic. Uh, and I remember telling my mom, and my mom was like, oh, my good career for you. I had been teaching dancing, um, so I've been a ballet dancer my whole life as well, and I really enjoyed teaching dancing, and my mum said, what about this instead? And I was like, okay, sure, and went to university and found out that I actually really do enjoy working with children, and I'm so glad I am not a car mechanic, because uh, that's not really my thing. <laughs> right, I like think I love being able to work with children and meeting all children from all over the show, from different cultures, different backgrounds, different ages. And it's always those light bulb moments, like when that kid makes that connection and looks at you and those eyes just go, oh, I understand. And that's just the why. Like I go home and I always tell my husband, I'm like, oh, this child did this today. And it just brings you so much joy. It's the best job really in the world. It really is. I love that. I love that testimonial. And I love to where your inspiration came from. I think uh, all of us as teachers had a moment at some point in, in our lives where we're like, this is why I want to do this. And this is what it feels like. And I love that the light bulb moments too are always just those moments that, you know, fill your heart, fill your educator heart completely and make sure that you can, you can continue to feed off that until the next light bulb moment and the next one and the next one. But that's why we, we do it. Cause we love, love kids and love seeing them grow. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm going to ask another question here, just kind of based on your history too. In what ways did your experience as a student shape your approach to teaching? Oh, I mean, I was a little bit knowing it though, or just a little bit, uh, but I definitely like to push boundaries. So for me as an educator, finding new ways of doing things, thinking outside the box, trying new ideas. I think that's helped me now. Uh, maybe not when I was uh, in primary, um, but now it's, you know, being able to think, okay, right, I've got this really great idea. How can we make it even better? What else could I do? Um, no, I don't really like that. We're going to try a different way sort of over here. So it's definitely given me a lot more creativity. Um, and I think just when you're really passionate about something as well, education and children you're just always wanting to do more um and at school I just always wanted to like be in everything I just wanted to know everyone and do more things so that's kind of shaped things now as well like I just want to be in everything because it's just great and you, you always find new things as well like I don't know everything but I just want to find out more and right this could work this might not work how else could we change that and I think that's how we as educators grow as well Absolutely. Spoken like a true educator. You're always learning, always getting better, always improving. There's always something else to do. Love it. Always. Uh, I want to ask one more question kind of on the iteration of your career and how you have felt it's kind of evolved over years. I know other guests we've had, they talked about how, you know, COVID was a big shift in their career or other things that, you know, potentially were impactful in changing the way that they teach. So thinking back to, you know, your first year teaching to where you are now being, you know, uh, in a lot of different classrooms and supporting in a lot of different ways, how has your teaching style kind of evolved over the years? And can you point to any specific moment when it was like, that was a shift for me and this is why? I think definitely being a mom helps. Um, you have to pivot a lot because you... Um, it's not just you, it's you've got your children at home and it's constantly trying to make my job easier so that I can go home and still be a person for my family. Um, so trying to find ways to like streamline my practice, trying to find ways to save time, that's always at the front of my mind because I don't want to go home and have, you know, 20% for my children and my family because that's not going to fill my as well. 
And um, like you said, COVID, COVID definitely helps helped change things a lot. Uh, finding different ways to think smarter. So like around your planning, around a sort of using AI to help save time, really trying to think of ways to better yourself for other people. So for me as well, that is my family. Um, and then, you know, moving out of the classroom a little bit more. So I'm now doing my uh, business full time as well. So I'm still doing relieving where I am, still get to be in the classroom. And a part of that is coaching and I'm using Cecil for that, which is great. But being able to use things in a different way as well is sort of like those light bulbs to sort of think differently and practically and apply the same skills that you would do in the classroom, but in a different representation. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. When I was a technology coach, I had the same perspective where it's like, uh, my students are no longer the small children in the classroom. They're now the adults who are in front of the classroom now teaching. And so you can still see the light bulb moments with teachers who you're helping coach and helping them move along too. Uh, it, it still is fulfilling to have an educator heart like that uh, in the same respect. So definitely. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want to jump to one more question before I dive into a uh, very uh, topic that's very close to my heart here, but I want to hear one more thing from you about kind of your past experience. I know all of us as educators um, hold on to specific moments, moments that they maybe impacted a student in a really specific way or the way that a student might have impacted you in a specific way. Um, could you share an experience where there was like a moment of impact that you just hang on to as a memory for your whole life? And how that kind of changed you as a teacher? Oh, there's lots. There's so many. I think I think what I hold on to is those handmade drawings and cards that they bring to you that might look like a scribble to you, but they've poured their soul into that. They, you know, they bring it to you, they say, Mrs. P, this is for you. And like that I've been on their mind that's the part that is just truly rewarding and I I have a, a folder which is actually here in my office um, with all of the drawings and cards that I've been given because they are so really important and I uh, like that's the part that I hold on to and I read through and I've got a couple on the wall just here behind my computer and that when I'm feeling down or feeling you know like I've just had one of those bad days I can look through those and think, right, I've made a difference to this child. This child thought about me, made me something, called me their favorite, you know, and that's those, it's those little moments that really make it special for me. And I know that I've done the best that I can to help support that child in that time. Love it. I love that. I love the way that you framed it in that, you know, if a student has you on their mind, that means that you're making an impact in their life and, and you're making a positive one that they're remembering and thinking about. And making an effort to do something towards, whether it's a beautiful, this very thorough art piece that they took a bunch of time to do and it's very, very wonderful to their best effort piece, which might be something that, um, you know, some people might look at and say, well, that's not, that's not, you know, art, but it's what their effort behind it and their their approach to it which one matters. It's for that child too. Like it might not be that they learned anything academically during the day, but the fact that they you know, have wanted to create something for you that you have been there for them to support them, even in like a relationship, just checking in on them. You know, they might be having a rough time at home and knowing that you're the, that stability person is that connection is so important. And a lot of the time, especially at the beginning of the year, when you get to know students, it is all about who they really are, you know, not what their goals are for reading, writing, maths. It's how can I support you? Is it that you need a hug? What is it that I can do to offer you support around that? Definitely. Oh, I absolutely love that. Love it, love it. I've I have so many more stories I can dive in there, but we're gonna jump into the I just total we're, that. I know. We're gonna jump into the next question and uh I'll I'll kinda kick it off with there was a rumor traveling around that Jordan one day was gonna get Seesaw tattooed on her arm before we decided to <laughs> rebrand and, and change our logo yeah. just a little bit. So I'd love to hear, you know, your history around Seesaw, why you love the tool, uh, why it kind of has made an impact. Obviously, more than just your career, but also for your life itself. Oh, I yeah, no, no, so that it's a true story. True story. Um, I think I told Angela when I was in America at ISD. Um, so I came across Seesaw on Twitter one day. I was scrolling on Twitter when I should have been uh, doing my job, and I was going through, and I saw this amazing with children taking photos. And at that point in New Zealand, we are using Blogger, and that kind of like 
it's okay, but the kids can't really use it. It's not really as friendly. And I remember thinking, this is life changing. I love it. I want children to post themselves. I was really into it and jumped on one of the live webinars. Then it was um, PD in your PJs. And I was the only New Zealander. It was some crazy time at night. And I remember Angela messaging me back saying, are you actually in New Zealand? And I was like, yes, this is amazing. And I just sort of started trialing it in my classroom. My kids loved it. They loved Back then it was only the drawing and the camera tool. So they were just taking really basic photos and drawing on their pictures. And I went to my principal the next year and I was like, look, we've got to use this. This is like life to children. You know, we're all about advocates for technology, you know, real great creative opportunities. And she was like, yeah, sure, go for it. And it is life changing for children in the classroom to be able to give them that voice. Like we talk about being creators and their learning opportunities. They're taking advantage of the tool to post themselves, to take photos, to talk about their learning. And I love that they can do that without me. You know, we scaffold them, show them how to use it, give them the iPad and say, cool, off you go, let's see what you can do. And the way that they actually know more than me sometimes is quite scary <laughs> because they're like, I already know this, this is P. I'm like, oh, really? Okay, off you go. And just the way that they engage, and it's another opportunity to connect with um, families. I know, like all across the world, parents are busy, family, families are busy. We don't have time to come into school as much. My daughter, I don't think I've gone into her school once this year because. Life is just so busy and Cecil really allows for that partnership between home, school, teacher and that that learning loop, you know, because it is so powerful being connected, having those opportunities. And I've used Cecil now, I think, I want to say it's like seven or eight years now. I have Google tattoos on me and I was committed to getting the Cecil original um, logo because I love Cecil. It is fantastic. And then you guys decided to rebrand. And I was like, well, I'm not getting a big S on me now. So you know, that's what it is. Oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah, that it's it's amazing to hear the iterations that you explain how Seesaw has changed over the years, listening to teacher feedback uh, and how we've kind of molded a way moving forward to just empower families, empower students in classrooms to be able to share their learning uh, and just bring everybody together around focusing on learning as they go and growth and development through that. So um, it's it's really like I'm in the same journey as you. I've been watching it and using it since it first started. And it's truly inspiring to see the impact that it has for young students. And like you were saying that the um, the independence that it can grow within kids to help them just to blossom and showcase who they really are and what they really know. And also for teachers too, though, like, it was life-changing in lockdown. Schools in New Zealand, we wouldn't have been able to do half of what we could have done without Seesaw. And also the time it takes, it saves for us as well. You know, uh, finding the lessons, the activities, having the resources there and being able to, you know, quickly edit them to make changes. It, it is really a tool that everyone should use. And that's just not being biased. It really is fantastic. Love it, love it. I want to ask you a question that you hinted at earlier, and I want to dive into that one a little more. You talked about when you go and you're in classrooms and you're coaching teachers, you're you're helping to improve their practices. You talked about focusing on saving time, being more efficient, streamlining their work. How have you found Seesaw to be a way to do that for these teachers? And what what are maybe a couple ways that you just try to share every single time when you go and talk to a teacher about that? So definitely the main one is the power of the microphone and a really great photo. You know, a child taking a photo of their art, their learning, their writing and recording themselves talking about that. It's so extremely powerful. When it comes to assessment, having students explain their thinking, save teachers time. You know, there's one of me, 25 of you, connecting one-on-one -on -one can take a while. Having children use the tools in Seesaw can definitely help save time there, which is really important. And I think just the flexibility of having, you know, your lessons, your activities already created. I'm not having to go away and think, right, I need to find this, make this. They're already there. We can, you know, edit some of the numbers or edit some of the info on the actual lesson. But in terms of it being there, why would I need to go somewhere else? It's already there. So definitely working with teachers, it's, yes, the basics, but the basics are so great. Like you don't have to go off and, you know, do a, a, a two-page multi-level activity, you know, with all of these fancy tools. Take a photo, have students explain their thinking, and you'll get some really rich conversation and evidence 
which you can continue on. Love it. I love that example. And it, it brings me back again to my coaching how when we had we talked about things like app smashing and using a bunch of different apps. Yes. And the beauty of Seesaw is that's all together. You know, you taking a it picture, is. layering on top of it and drawing on it too. You don't have to bounce around to a bunch of different places. It's all right here in Seesaw. And then the best and part it's is so that kid it's friendly. Yeah, it's so kid friendly. It goes into the journal, it's shared with families in the classroom and they're off and running. Yeah. And then that, those parents have that instant feedback, you know, they're like, oh, my child's posted this and they go home and you can be like, hey, what did you do today? And being able to have those conversations, it really is such a game changer for connection. And in New Zealand, we talk a lot about like whanau, which is family and whanaungatanga, which is creating relationships and using Seesaw just brings it and elevates that to another level. Yeah. Love it. That's so amazing. So amazing. Uh, we have time for like one more question before we kind of close things up. And I want to make sure that we're really purposeful with, you know, anybody who's listening, they might've already gleaned a lot of great things, but I want to always close up with just some quick actionable steps for somebody who's maybe new into their Seesaw journey. I know, you know, you, myself, we've been using Seesaw for since the very beginning, seven, eight, nine years. Mm -hmm. What would advice would you give to somebody who's like brand new? They were scrolling through Twitter or X, whatever it's called now. And they get to, they see some yeah. what kind of things would you tell them to start with so that they can get on that journey to, to have the knowledge that you do and have the impact in their classroom like you're seeing? Oh, if it was someone like me, just do it. Like just get in, upload your children, have some photos and like explore with it because you, your children learn by doing and you also need to learn by doing too. So creating a demo class for yourself, practice using the tools, um, having an exploration time to just see what it is and what it can do for you. And alongside that, also starting small if you are rolling it out with your class. So not doing 700 things. It could just be simply let's take a photo of something we're doing one day a week. Let's just get into that habit. Modeling with the class. Let's, let's go together. Airplay your iPad up to the TV. Let's take a photo. Let's take a photo before we use the next tool. I think definitely, you know, like with anything, you've got to learn by doing, but also learn through scaffolded small chunks because it is great, but it also can be quite overwhelming for new people. So really just trying to find one little thing to begin with to start off your journey. But definitely jump in because the only way you're going to learn is by doing. Love it. And, and using that uh, photo tool is definitely such a powerful way to start. You know, there's so much power behind photo, like literally if there's a photos worth a thousand words or whatever the phrase is. You know, you can definitely uh, use that and have that be something that's impactful, even from day one, just taking a simple photo of what yeah. you did, what you built over in the station, what you wrote on a piece of paper, um, and having that be something you're, you start to share with all of your classmates. I absolutely love it. Well, Jordan, we could talk all day about just the amazing things and how much Seesaw has been impactful and all the, the history we have around how supporting kids and all those beautiful light bulb memories that we have inside of us, but we are at time. So... Uh, I just want to say thank you for being here today. Thank you for taking time to match make across the entire world here. Uh, having an episode from, you know, the United States to New Zealand is such an amazing opportunity. And we just thank you for sharing your expertise with us today. Thank you so much for having me. Have a